Hi everybody, this is Brian from Provision Studios and today I'm going to make a video uh, about how to calibrate your Soundcraft Signature Series console. The reason why you would want to do this is if you are, let's say, doing an in-the-box mix, you've got everything going on, um, not on the console, but all in the computer. And, uh, and in this example, um, we're going to calibrate through Pro Tools. So um, whatever doll you're using, you would use a similar process to do this. And um, uh, again, the reason why you would do this is um, you've got a mix. Um, you're, you're good with everything you've done. And now you want to either analog sum through the console or you want to maybe do... Um, track by track routing back through the console or you would want to do the way I like using it is um, stem mix back through the console where you actually take like your drums and put them on a stereo pair then your guitars and your vocals and so on and so forth all through stereo pairs alright so a um, couple things we're going to need first is we'll need our session set up with a uh, a track, an audio track uh, that has a um, a uh, a test tone. In this case, we have um, uh, one thousand hertz tone that is going to be routed through analog one and two. Next thing you're going to need is a uh, metering plug-in. You're going to take the metering plug-in and put it on an audio track that is, is actually running through the print return on your console. So if you know anything at all about the Signature Series consoles, Analog 2324 is the print return back from the console into your doll of choice. All right, so um, I'm going to go stereo pair by stereo pair on the console so um, we've got our audio track right here which has our test tone on it it is going out to analog one and two which is going to then be returned via the master which is back into the console or back into the the doll is uh, analog 2324 which I have renamed print track right here so the way you would do that is in your setup in IO right here under output or I'm sorry input instead of this say analog 2324 I just went and double clicked on it so you could do the same thing right here so I double clicked on it renamed it print that's just for my own purposes. All right, so that's why this says print here. Then, then it, the that that return bus is is routing out to the calibration track, which is a audio track that I have right here with my VU meter on it. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do then is again our test tone is routing out to analog one two. We have USB return pressed on it, our faders all the way down, and they are routed uh, out to the master panned left and right. Okay, so I'm going to hit play, and my test tone is going to then come through the console. All right. There we go. So I got them to zero. All right, you can see right here on the console that these are not at zero. Zero's right here. That's that's Unity right there. So you can see, um, based on 
the way that my doll is interpreting audio that I've had to take these up over uh, five. I'm like on maybe six on the uh, the fader actually to get to zero on my console. So then I would go to three, four, do the same thing. The, again, they are USB returns depressed and master one, two. Hit play again. They are, they are actually lower. They are lower than one, two. So the whole point of this is that I'm going to do this to each track pair, each stereo pair, which are panned left and right. And then when I go and run my mix from my session through this board, I am not going to have to move faders here. I'm going to be able to mix the faders from my session and then just run through here knowing that the level that is in, the, is in my session is going to be properly represented on the console here. And then I will be able at that point to maybe do EQ mix moves and not have to worry about um, uh, doing uh, uh, any kind of fader automation or anything like that. I can build all that in my session and not have to use the console for anything more than for the analog feature of the console, which is analog depth, analog warmth, um, and maybe uh, just you know to sum a mix back through the console. Um, this is very helpful in a studio like mine where I am mixing multiple songs uh, daily and um, I don't, on a, and I have a true analog console here. It's actually a hybrid, but the console itself is analog. There is no uh, session recall on it. So once I close a session out and I open up another one and I start doing moves on my desk, and then I close it and want to go back to the other session, those move th that those settings from the previous session are not going to be recalled on my on my console. So this is one way to do a workaround with that is to go calibrate my console. Again, it's real simple. My next one would be analog five six. Again, pan left and right, USB return, masters my output, hit play, come up with my faders. hit my zero mark and I'm good. And then I can move on to my next set. Um, they are closer to three, four than they, than it would be to one, two. So I am noticing some discrepancies on the console. And then you would do this periodically, uh, maybe weekly or monthly, depending on how critical your mixes need to be. Um, again, I'm going to go through all of the of the tracks right here and get them um, properly calibrated and I'm going to open a session up and show you how that would work on the console with all my faders uh, calibrated so we'll do seven eight next
going to stop there. Uh, track 13, I would do 13 and 14 next, but I'm actually using channel 14 for my mic. So I'm not going to worry about calibrating that right now. So now I've, I've calibrated uh, tracks 1 through 12 in stereo pairs. So 1 and 2 I'm going to use in a session uh, for a instrument group, probably drums. 3 and 4 I will use for guitars. 5 and 6 I'll probably use for vocals. 7 and 8 may be lead guitar. 9 and 10 may be synth, 11 and 12 may be effects, 13 would probably be like bass or something. So let me do 13. I'm going to pan it center. Actually, we'll do it left. So there we go. So it's ready. And I'm going to go center with it. All right. So that's your calibration. Take a good look at it. Um, I, I'm monitor. I hit my input monitoring here. If I don't input monitor, I get nothing on my VU meter. So I have to have input monitoring ena enabled in order to get a reading on my VU meter when I uh, hit play. Um, and then this is going through the master out. So, and that's why it's muted. So I don't have a, a, a loop created, an audio loop created. All right, and, and that, and then I save this. And then again, I will call this session up maybe once a week, uh, once a month, depending on um, how critical uh, I need my mix to be. If it's just, let's say I've been doing a lot of mixing in a week and um, none of my mixes are going out for mastering or are going out for the final mix, I probably won't do a calibration. In fact, I'm probably not even running through the console for mixing. I'm doing everything in the box just to get out uh, rough mixes to my clients. But once I go to that next step, once the roughs are approved and then I'm starting my stem mastering process, I am going to calibrate my console first, then go into the next part of this video, which is going to be um, uh, doing a stem mix through the console uh, using um, the console for, with nothing more for nothing more than uh, to pass the audio through the analog circuitry and then using the EQ on the console um, for that final analog uh, uh, quality to your to your uh, your um, to your mix um, in that video what we're going to do is we're going to use something um, uh, from Waves called the Q-Clone. I'm going to show you how to set that up. And um, for anyone that is, uh, that's using the Signature Series consoles from Soundcraft, this will be a great way, again, to take this concept of calibrating the console um, and then uh, bringing a mix into it that... Um, uh, you're going to be using your levels from your doll mix instead of the faders on your console. Um, this will be a great way to do the same thing with your EQs. The Q clone actually allows you to take the EQs off of the console and print them onto your track in a plugin so that you're actually, um, you, can, you don't even have to set your EQs in your, in your mix. Uh, on the board you can you can mix your session through the console with your EQs and then store those EQs onto the tracks themselves with the Q clone plug-in because it clones the EQ curves of the console anyway we'll get into that in the next video uh, when we show how to stem mix through the console using um, the monitor calibration settings we just created all right see you in the next video bye bye now